Hi, I'm Daniel from Tumble. In this video, I'll be talking about custom behaviors. Custom behaviors are great for running actions inside of symbols that are triggered outside of them. So they sort of interface between the barrier of a scene and symbols within that scene. They're also useful for doing things like resetting timelines, but they're extremely flexible and will help you create more powerful and organized hype documents. So I'm going to start with a simple example and then dig into symbols and custom behaviors and how they work in symbols. So in this document, I have two timelines. I've got a main timeline with clouds going left to right. And then I also have a additional timeline with boats going right to left. So if I want this button to um, start both those timelines, of course, I could do a regular mouse click action and chain a couple actions together. But if I want to create a behavior outside of this button that is sort of related more to the context of the scene, I can create a custom behavior. So for that, I will scroll down to the bottom of the scene inspector and then click uh, start timeline for both of those uh, timelines. Now, the name that you give your custom timeline is important because it's what you call when you trigger a, a mouse action. So we've got our two actions. I'm going to call this custom behavior uh, boats clouds. So now we have a boats clouds uh, custom behavior that is sort of ready and waiting to be called. So to call it, I'm going to select that button and then create a mouse click action which runs it. So now we have our mouse click action, and what that'll do is start both those timelines from zero. I'm going to quickly preview and make sure it works. Great, so it looks like it's doing what I told it to. So that's sort of a uh, basic timeline start action. Um, a pretty common behavior you would want to do in a complex scene is resetting timelines. So instead of creating, as I mentioned earlier, a mouse click action which sets a bunch of timelines to zero, you can create in the context of your scene a reset timeline custom behavior. And that you can run from wherever and it's a little easier for maintaining your sanity in complex documents. So I'm going to create a new custom behavior called reset. And this, as you probably imagined, would just reset all of the timelines to zero. So since we just have two, it's just the boats moving and main timeline. So now we have this uh, that we need to link up and I'm going to set it to reset. All right, so now that's all set up. And when those two timelines are running, we can get those timelines back to zero by clicking this button. Of course, you could um, modify that so that it also pauses the timeline, but for us, that's just moving it to time zero. So I'm going to talk about symbols. Um, this is really the key use case for custom behaviors. Symbols are like a scene within a scene. If you have a button like this outside of your symbol, and in this scene I have two symbols, I have a cannon and a trebuchet, you can't really access timelines inside of those symbols. You can trigger custom behaviors, um, and that's sort of what we'll be doing, but you can't start timelines anywhere except the current scene you're on. So to make a custom behavior that is accessible outside of a symbol, you'll need to get into that symbol and then go into the context of your symbol in the symbol inspector and then click add new behavior. So for us, in this case, we want to create a custom behavior called launch. And what this will do is just start the main timeline. Now, a custom behavior can have the same name and do different things in different places. So in this canon, we have an additional timeline that we want to also be triggered when launch is triggered. So inside of this canon symbol, I entered by double clicking on it, you can add an additional custom behavior called launch. And this will also be listening for the launch trigger. So 
actually I want to start the launch cannon timeline. So that's all set. Now outside of those two symbols I have my button. And this button is what's actually triggering launch. So we have, if we had launch and launch two, this would show up as two separate uh, custom behaviors. You could of course trigger two custom behaviors in a chained action like this, but for us, we just need one. So I'm just using launch. So now I can preview it and make sure this works. It looks like it did it. We've got a launch on both of those symbols. So both symbols were listening for the trigger and they triggered, so it worked. So that's the key use case for custom behaviors. Um, there's a lot more you can do with custom behaviors. They're extremely flexible. So if you have any questions, uh, please join us on the forums or comment on this video below. Thanks.